Hey guys, so four functions of money in four minutes. Firstly, the first function of money is a medium of exchange. Um, as you know, in today's economy, guys, we use notes and coins as money rather than barter as a medium of exchange. Back in the uh, days, people used to use uh, different things to buy goods and services, uh, many different things. And this used to be known as bartering. But now it it is the form of money, cash. Right. And it enables goods and services as a result to be exchanged quite easily. And therefore, transactions tend to be settled efficiently and easier than before. Um, if a person, an individual or even a business were to be in debt, debt tends to be paid through the function of money as well. Um, and then lastly, with the medium of exchange, money avoids, of course, the problem of bartering principally the double coincidence of once, um, whereas bartering, someone's got something, you don't want it, problem. Money solves that. Secondly, the second function of money is the store of value or wealth. Money, as we know, acts as a store of value over a certain period of time. So your money now, in this particular day and month, will be the same as the next day, as the next month, tomorrow and thereafter. So that store of value or wealth, it is sustained and has a value over a period of time. Now, in addition, this as a result enables individuals and also firms on occasion also to spend in the future knowing with the security that this money has a certain value and will be valued in the future. However, on the other hand, what's the problem with this? Inflation, guys. How? Well, inflation, if it were to occur, then that value of your money diminishes. So your £5 today may not be the £5 in a year's time, for instance. Okay. Thirdly, the third function of money is that it is a measure of value and also a unit of account. It is a measure of value and a unit of account. As a unit of account, guys, money serves, in fact, as the common base of comparison that people use to especially present prices and also to record debts. Now, in terms of presenting prices, if you go to the market, for example, one trader to the next, you'll notice that they've got it in a certain currency. They've got it presented as a price. So it serves that value being recorded. And then, of course, if there were to be any debts, it is recorded through monetary value. So it makes it easier or easier to understand in terms of comparison. And secondly, it provides a measure to value goods and services. It's, it, you know, it's very clear that the value is of this particular good is in monetary value. So that's the third one. In terms of the last and fourth and final one, in terms of the function of money, it is, of course, a standard for deferred payment. Now, what do we mean by this? Money allows individuals to pay for goods and services at a later date, despite their consumption taking place now. So they purchase the good or service, but they will be paying it later because money provides that security for the individual or the firm in this case because of the reason that it's an accepted medium of exchange. We've probably heard of it. Buy now, pay later. A credit form of agreement which is offered by the seller to the buyer and the payment takes place in the future knowing that there will be security in this as well. So those are the four functions of money.